So now we're going to talk about what Amal mentioned in terms of actually swapping existing connections. Uh, so uh, people, I think it was in frogs, you can take uh, these nerves from the eye and the hand, for instance, that go to the traditional regions, and you can swap them and make the brain process this information in the new brain areas in a functional way. The thing is, this only works up to a certain point within the animal's life. So in general, there's a pattern of, so all this, these changes in the brain are termed plasticity in neuroscience. So the general pattern of plasticity is you're born with a lot of plasticity. Uh, it lasts for maybe three years, then it starts going downhill. Uh, so your ability, ability for, your, for your brain to change uh, reduces after that. Well, this radically. I mean, you can do smaller yeah. stuff, like yeah. remember a phone number or something. That's exactly. a physical yeah. change. But So this is uh, basically determined by what's called the critical period. Uh, and that for each species, there's a certain number of time after they're born in which you can create these sort of radical changes of the structure and the network of the brain and what it can process. Um, but also, even as you get older, uh, you, you've probably all heard, practicing games, keeping your mind act, uh, active, allows you to sort of maintain uh, higher levels of plasticity throughout your life. Uh, so, now so we're gonna... but just one thing about these things, which are so neat, right? So in Lee's experience in the laboratory, what they would do is they actually would take some animals, and they would get that nerve, and they would reconnect two different areas. It's going to be not too long before you can electronically connect these two different areas together, where you can pick up like the guys a couple an hour ago with the EEG or picking up a sensor here and then sending it back into another area there. That's a super interesting and weird thing. And the second thing is the natural phenomena where this actually happens to folks. And you hear about phenomena like syn synesthesia where people can like hear colors or they have a smell for numbers or something like that. And that may be just the biological overlap or the cross wiring of some of these brain regions. So things that we could later do to people or animals, these folks already have them. And for me, like in philosophy, which was the most amazing thing about all this, is that the little cognition computer for each of these different senses is different. So your cognition computer for aud auditory inputs versus visual inputs versus numbers versus whatever is just different. So it's like taking a document you wrote on a Windows machine and suddenly having all the fonts in, in a Mac. Uh, if you were to crosswire these things, and you'd find unexpected insights potentially from doing it.